Norway was under German occupation during the majority of the Second World War, and was the site of a major front prior to the invasion of France. The government that was put into place was extremely pro-German, and as you would imagine, it did everything it could do to aid the Germans in their war effort. This included pushing Norwegian men to form a military unit to join the so-called crusade against Bolshevism. Only 1900 men would take up the call, but these men would form the Norwegian Legion, and in this episode, we'll be covering the history of this unit and the part it played in the Second World War. Howdy and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Aster, and here we cover lesser known topics and events that occurred throughout history. If that's something that seems interesting to you, hit that subscribe button, and if you do, make sure to hit that notification bell so you can become a part of history. Nazism has started to make a rise in many European countries, and the Norwegians are no exception to this. Their largest party was the National Samlin, or National Assembly, and it had been formed by former Defense Minister Vidkun Kislein in 1933. The party largely faltered and gained public support for some time, however. They never managed to gain broad political appeal, and they netted only 2% of the vote in the 1933 elections, and they would receive even less in the 1936 elections. The party modeled itself off of the German Nazi party, and they formed a paramilitary organization that was similar to the German SS or the Slovak Hilenka, but would only see a maximum strength of 1,000 prior to 1940. The Germans would invade Norway and Denmark on April the 9th of 1940. That same day, Kislein would march into the radio broadcast studio in Oslo and proclaim himself as the new Prime Minister, demanding all resistance to the invasion to stand down. Virtually no one listened to his demands, but the Norwegian army was extremely ill-equipped to deal with the invasion. And even though Allied troops would land in Narvik, they did little more than prolong the inevitable, and the nation would finally capitulate on June the 10th. In September, Hitler would appoint Josef Terbolfen as the Reichskommissar of Norway. Here, Terbolfen would appoint 11 other individuals to help him govern the country without forming a proper government, as the plan was to elect Kisling and his party to eventually take over. All other political parties would be banned, and membership within the NS quickly grew, which would gain 15,000 members by the end of the year. However, Kislein was a very controversial individual within his own party, and factions would fight bitterly for political decisions and control over the movement at large. This fighting would delay the appointment of a proper government until February of 1942. The previously mentioned factions within the party were in many ways also openly bitter about cooperation with German fascists, and they viewed Quisling as a German puppet rather than a nationalist Norwegian, as Kisling still answered to Terbolfen, who in turn only answered to Hitler. Kisling himself tried to use the cooperation with Hitler as a means for his own direct gains, firstly to try and remove Terbolfen, then hoping that one day, Norway would regain her independence with Kisling at its helm. So when a call for a unit of Norwegian soldiers came to aid against the Soviets, he jumped at the opportunity to supply said men. See, the Norwegian army had been disbanded in the June of 1940, and a large section of its pre-existing army had either fled to the Allies or had gone to Sweden. By giving men for the Germans, Kisling aimed to re-establish a standing Norwegian army, and use it to reassert claims to not only their independence, but a return to the height of Norwegian power. A number of Nords had already been brought into the German army, via either the Nordland or the Viking divisions, even though neither of these were strictly Norwegian in nature. Terborfen announced the creation of a Forli Norwegian unit to fight against the USSR in June of 41, which was simply dubbed the Norwegian Legion. The formation of this unit was backed openly by Kuzlein, who would soon gain thousands of volunteers. However, most of them believed that they were to create the core of a new Norwegian army, and one of the main propaganda tools for the recruitment was playing towards the general sympathy that many had towards the Finnish, 
from the previous wars against the Soviets in 1939. Many that would sign up viewed it as an effort to save the Finns against future communist aggression. And on top of that, a section of the NS, and thus a section of the Norwegian Volunteers, were also interested in restoring Norway to its territorial height of the 13th century, which included a fair amount of Finnish land. However, the hopes of establishing a Norwegian core in Finland proved to not come to fruition. Instead of these men being sent to the Finnish front as their own separate unit, these men became a part of the German army, which was a massive setback for many that signed up, and it was one of the many promises not kept. Originally, they were promised that they would fight in Norwegian uniforms, under the Norwegian flag, with Norwegian weapons, and in the Finnish front. However, they were instead given German uniforms with a Norwegian flag patch, they were integrated into the German army, and they were sent to fight in the Western Front away from Finland. This revelation made many in the Legion not renew their enlistments after the original six months were up, and they will lose two other main commanders around the same time, those being Finn Gjelstrup and Jorgen Baka, and command would finally fall to form the Army Officer Arthur Quist. When the Americans officially entered the war, the reenlistment rates dropped even more, and by the start of 42, Quist was left with little more than 1,200 men at his command, many of which were disillusioned, leading to low morale and desertions. From here, the Legion would be sent to the southern end of Leningrad near Gatchina in February of 42. As soon as they reached the line, they were peppered by Soviet snipers, artillery, night raids, and the harsh winter. They would come under heavy Soviet fire on April the 18th, where they suffered massive casualties. They'd get replacements and be transferred to another division, along with Latvians, Dutch, and Flemish volunteers in the summer. In the winter, they'd see some of their hardest fighting, losing roughly half of their whole strength in the Soviet counterattack, and they would see even more action during Operation Iskra, the operation that broke the Leningrad blockade. The Legion would be sent back home to Norway in March of 43, where they would be given two weeks leave and informed that their unit was to be disbanded, and they were to join the new SS Division Nordland. Of the roughly 1,200 men that returned home of the unit, only half of them would join the Nordland Division. In total, around 1,900 men would sign up for the Legion, where 4 to 600 would give up their lives fighting in the unit. Many other Norwegian-based units would fight alongside the Germans during the rest of the war, such as within the Division Nordland or the 6th Mountain Division Nord, but those units will be covered in a future episode. I hope you all enjoyed the brief look into one of the many foreign SS units that existed during the Second World War. If you liked what you ended up seeing, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video, usual YouTube stuff you hear by everybody. And if you would like to assist the channel in growing further, consider donating on my Patreon page for some additional little perks. If there's a topic that you would like to suggest for me to cover in the future, say so down in the comments below, and I'll catch you all next time. Take care.